Hi everybody, this is Donnie. I'm gonna be showing you today how I make a sticker with a font and with an icon. I'll do one of each and just give you the general idea of how I go about making a sticker. First of all, if you're gonna use a font, you gotta pick a font. So on the left-hand side of your screen is a text button over here. I'm gonna click it and then I'm gonna take my cursor and click inside my work area. I have a blinking blue line going up and down right here. This is gonna help me as I put in my text. So before I choose a font, I'm actually going to type a word. I'm gonna use, let's use the month of May for an example. So I've typed in the month of May I'm going to take my cursor because I like the extra room. I'm going to spread this big blue bar to the right so that I can have more room to work with in here in this box. Then I'm going to highlight the letters that I just typed. Go over to the far right hand side of the screen to the text style panel. Hard to say that fast. Click on it and open up my text or my font. I'm going to use Kandara, so I'm gonna click on Kandara, and automatically what I have highlighted will now be in the font that I've chosen. Okay, if I want to, I'll just show this to you. Let me unclick what's highlighted. The second spot up here with the really flourished letter A, if you click on it, that is where you will find glyphs. I'm gonna try to click on this and get it to open up my glyphs. There it goes. So for Kandara, I have these glyphs that I can choose from, although they don't look like they're all that special, but anyway, that's where they are. So if you're looking for a glyph, that's where you'll find it. Sometimes, depending on what font you have, uh, it will give you prettier glyphs, swoops and swirls and things like that. Okay, now I've chosen my font, I've made a word with it, and now I need to make it into a sticker. At this point, I don't even need this box anymore. So I'm going to be concentrating on my worksheet area and show you what I do next. Because this word, and by the way, as long as this box is highlighted, you can work with your text style. Now, as soon as I click out of it, it'll go away. Just so you know, that that's kind of how you turn it off. If I click on the word May, I'm gonna move it and show you that it is all one piece at the moment. So if I want to do anything to it, now's the time. I'm gonna come up in the left-hand corner. There is, in this area, two down arrows. I'm going to, first of all, choose the line arrow and give my letters over here a black outline just by choosing that color. I also want to fill those letters with black so I'm going to choose the fill arrow and fill it with black. You can make it any color you want. I'm going to choose black because you can see it better. Okay, I'm gonna click outside and then I can move it around and do whatever I want with it. But it's not ready to be cut like a sticker. So what do I do next? Let me close the text box. There's really two ways you can do this, and I'll show you both ways because I use both. Just it depends on what I'm doing. The first way you can outline this so that you can have a cut line is to come over to the far right-hand side of the screen to this butterfly icon, which is the trace screen. Click at the upper section here where it says select trace area you will get a plus sign that you can use to drag over what you want to trace. 
automatically the solid fill is chosen. I go down to threshold and I click up somewhere in the 80s to the 90s area. It's about as high in there as I can get without it turning yucky. Watch your, your icon or your words or whatever you're working on. Make that as good as you can get it. Some of y'all know a whole lot more about the despeckle, the high pass filters and things like that that I do not know. <laughs> so I'm just going to stick with threshold. And then I want to trace the outer edge of what I'm making because I want a traced edge for a sticker. So I'm going to come in here and grab just the black word that I made. And I have this outline. That outline I do not want to cut. It happens to be in red. If it's not in red, if it's in black or another color, uh, and you want it to be a cut line that is red, you can change it. But let's wait a minute. Because next I'm going to come over here and scoot down from that butterfly and go to the star. This, this is the offset panel. And I want to offset the word May, so I'll click Offset. Now, I'm not clicking anything over here yet or else it'll turn off my offset panel. I still want to work with it, so I'm not clicking anything yet. But there's a little dot right here that I need to work with. I want it to go away. So let me see if I can make it go away by making my offset bigger. Well, it did. One click up to 0 0.130 and it got rid of that little dot. Otherwise, my uh, cameo would, my silhouette cameo would actually cut that little dot because it's a cut line. I can also take it away if I wanted it smaller. Let's go in and make that dot even bigger and give myself this little problem on purpose because I want to show you how to fix it. I'm going to come in really close to the word may, maybe not that close, this will work, right there. I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to go ahead and move into the screen a little bit more so that you can see what I'm working on. And now I have the word May that was the original outline and then I have the offset outline. I'm going to grab the line of the original word May and I'm going to put it to the side. I don't need that now. I want this offset line because this is where I want to cut my sticker that says May. Let me bring the word up here and you'll see kind of how it looks. Okay. Y'all have noticed that there are these two places where if I leave them there, my machine will cut them out, but I don't want it to do that. So I'm going to choose this outline by clicking on it. I'm going to do the right mouse button and hit release compound path. When I do that, I take all the particles of this image of this outline and I separate them. So I can either swipe these to the side as trash or I can click on them individually, right mouse click and cut and it'll go away. So just that's just kind of how I do it. Let me bring the word may up into that. Remember this is pretty large right now. And then I'm going to highlight both the outline and the word may. Next I want them to be centered. So I'm going to open the transform panel, which is these three little uh, columns. I don't even know what they are to tell you, but I'm going to go to the horizontal line and choose the second button, align center. Click it once and the same with the vertical and align middle. And that will center my word may into this outline that I made. I'm going to right mouse click it and group it. And now I have a sticker. I can make any size I want. And it will cut it out with that red cut line. Okay. 
let's do I'm gonna have to bump the screen out a little bit and go grab my star okay now I have a star and when I click on it you can see that there's this huge square around it and I don't want it to be that way because it might get in the way of making stickers multiple stickers so I want to get rid of that I want just the star to be what I'm working with I'm gonna make this actually just a little bit smaller we're gonna work with this same idea first thing I'm gonna do is go to the trace panel select trace area it gives me that little crosshair that I can now encompass the image I want to work with it has a solid fill which is fine I'm gonna up the threshold and try to get that just as good as I can without it um, making a mess around it sometimes it gets little tiny dots all the way around it and I have to watch out for that so next what I want to do is choose the trace and detach because anything that the image came with that is attached to it as if it were a background I want to get rid of it all of this background area that's gray so I'm going to trace and detach first let me move the star out of the way sometimes when you do this you will actually have some little tiny black um, it looks like little ash around the area and I'm gonna highlight that area and you see it takes this big huge square and highlights it if you don't have anything highlighted when you take that area that you have detached that means you didn't have anything to detach I did so I'm gonna right mouse click that and cut it because it could leave little black particles that you can't really see it could leave a white background it could do all kinds of things so now I have what I'm calling a clean image to work with now I'm going to take that image come to the star on the right hand side which is the offset panel I've already chosen it it has now you see the smaller box around it and I'm going to offset that I'm going to bring down the distance by clicking on the down arrow get it to about 0, 0.0 I'll call it 0 0.070 and apply okay I'm gonna click outside it's already centered everything's fine I'm going to for this purpose show you how to do an internal offset so I'm going to actually just click the star hit the control button on my keyboard the right arrow key and copy that image next to it I have not grouped this yet so I can do that and separate them now I'm gonna actually group what I first made and set it aside let me just make that a little bit smaller now let me show you how to do an internal offset I'm going to click the image and hit internal offset can you see the red star to the inside where it made that let me get a little closer just in case I want you to be able to see it that's the internal offset if I don't want that one so I'm gonna to try to get rid of it there it is you can see it there it was not a good offset I did not like it I'm not going to use that one and since I had clicked on um, these buttons up here it turned off my offset so I'm going to click it again internal offset and this time I want to move these red lines closer to the edge so let's go up arrow actually in this one I have to go down arrow <laughs> now if I want my machine to cut just inside I can do that now on this over here I don't want to click it but on this star over here you can see where it rounded the interior of that over here we have a corner button that we can choose occasionally I can make this work but today it's not it's skewed it slightly 
so that it's not a perfect, I'll show it to you. It's not a perfect point to the inside, but for cutting at this point, I think I'm gonna call that okay. So again, I can bring my image over here and if I want to leave a little bit of bleed to the outside of a cut line, like if my machine's not maybe perfectly calibrated, it might cut it, you know, slightly off. It will still cut all of the color that I have. So that's just another way you can make a sticker and use the offset to help you create a cut line. One other thing about a cut line, a cut line is over here. I'm going to come to the one, two, three, the fourth button down, the line style. This line has to be set at zero to be a cut line. Our silhouette machine will automatically read that as a cut line and will not print it. That's important because if you make lines and thicken them, it will print. If I were to choose this and put it in my star, group it, make stickers out of it, copy it, whatever, it's going to print everything you see, including that big red line, and there is not a cut line around it. So just wanted to throw that in there so you could see. And I hope that helped on how to make a sticker out of a font and an icon. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.